European hangover or just out of his depth, Barry? What's it going to be today for Fog Football as we review Aberdeen now, Hibernian 2? Two teams that started this weekend in the bottom three. Two teams that are hoping and got aspirations for a top three finish. And two teams that after the three points have been decided still find themselves in the bottom three. Think three is the magic number here. Like I said, both teams wanting that third spot. Both teams currently in the bottom three and Hibernian getting all three points. It's their first win of the season. Aberdeen still without a victory, still without a big W. And I feel like the pressure is now truly applied to Barry Robson. He talked about the hacking result. He talked about how the two games against hacking helping Aberdeen get into a glorious competition in Europe took it out of them. But in reality, they could have got pumped both games against Hacking. They'd still be in the same competition. So I'm not quite sure that excuse is going to wash. I simply don't think Barry Robson is the man for Aberdeen. I don't think he ever was the man. He had a good run of form. But these clubs are just going to have to learn the hard way. You can't just appoint the manager that gets a couple of good results. They went for the cheap option. They went for Barry Robson thinking that this would have long-term success. And... Not really. He had the new manager bounce, and that new manager bounce has well and truly worn off. Why did they think it would be a good idea to give Barry Robson the Aberdeen job when it's his first go at managerial football as first team head coach? I, I just don't get this. Surely it's not the way to go. If they really thought he'd done a good job, then maybe offer him a position as number two or something like that. But I think to just give him the job straight away, it was always going to set Aberdeen up for failure. Yeah, you're going to get the odd manager that will have their first role as manager and then go on to be really successful. But most managers do start off in the lower leagues for a reason. And that reason is because they're not very good. They take a while to learn their trade. And I just think bringing managers in, it's setting them up for failure. We've seen it happen with countless managers. Hearts are in a similar boat with Stephen Naismith. And I think the same with Barry Robson. I don't think Barry Robson will see it the end of the season as manager. Nope. I don't think he will. And I'm not buying this European hangover thing because, I mean, Hibs played Aston Villa as well. They got beat 3-0. Aberdeen, all right, maybe more of a competitive game against Hacking. But for me, they've got six more games coming up in Europe. So uh, are, they, are the six games coming after those six games just write-offs? He's not going to be able... So let's just say, right, that Aberdeen don't win any of those six games after the European games. What fucking situation is their season going to be in for him just to whip out that excuse? But there's no excuse for that. Sacked by Christmas. Like, they've signed a lot of players. They've signed, like, 14 players. Like, you you knew you were guaranteed, Europe. See this excuse of, oh, Europe takes out the players. Fucking rotate, then. You, you know what I mean? I, I don't... I honestly... I, it's a cheap-ass excuse. And see this guy lining up. Real up. clubs don't hire their fucking caretaker managers. Look at Man United. That time they gave gigs four games... Giggs could have won those four games 5-0. He, he was never going to get the job. It just doesn't work like that. Real clubs, don't pro proper footballing clubs, just don't give. Well, they did get Ollie the job. He was caretaker. That's different. He'd managed in Norway and apparently done a good job. I got relegated with Cardiff too. Well, they, my point is he'd been a manager. What's Barry Robson done? No, Barry Robson's done nothing, but I, I think United is the wrong club to look at. Pretty poorly run club, not that Aberdeen are, you know, the holy grail, but we have to start off in this game. Two teams in desperate need of a win. Who needed it more? I, think there's a, I mean, I know Hibs are on no points, and you could definitely say, right, well, Hibs need it more. But, I mean, it's not like Aberdeen's had the greatest start to the season. Aberdeen needed it more for two reasons. A, they're at home, and B, Barry Robson is becoming under pressure, or beginning to come under pressure. He's making Stevie Naismith look good. David Gray, no no one expects anything from him. He's literally just a caretaker manager until Hibs appoints somebody. Losing today wasn't going to do David Gray any harm long term because he's not going to get the job anyway. And I think a lot of Hibs fans would have expected to lose today because how poor they've been. Pataudry's a difficult place to go to. So the pressure was always going to be on Aberdeen and it didn't pay off. Didn't pay off indeed. But 
We do kick off this game, Jamie McGrath, he heads wide. We have a Will Fish header, he heads over. I think Will Fish is like the worst centre-back to grace this league. The guy's fucking shite. I'm talking about United, that's where he's from. I mean, you know what? If 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 45-year-old Johnny Evans and fucking Slabhead can get a game, could this not guy not get a game for United? Would Mark Goldbridge be raging in his fucking pyjamas over Will Fish? Will Fish, he's like a fish out of water. I'd pay fucking money to see it, but anyway... Martin Boyle, he uh, cuts in for the, the right-hand side. He is a shot saved. El Yuhan, who I think at points actually looks unplayable with his pace. I think so. No. He does. With his pace. <laughs> it's had some good runs, like, but I wouldn't use the term unplayable. No, pace can be unplayable. Like, I, mean, let's be, I mean, Matondo's got unplayable pace, but his final product's pish. You know what I mean? No, I, I, does he fuck unplayable pace? Up, no, nah, come on. Like, you think Matondo is faster than Sakala? No, no, I don't, but Sakala's not at Rangers. Why would I mention Sakala? Because he was there last year, and I just want to make it. I'm, I'm trying to judge. He so was fucking Geo. I'm trying to. I, well, he didn't have much pace, did he? No. Maybe in his prime, like, but certainly. Although the pace of Rangers got him out the doors pretty quick, like. Right, true, true, but. I know other, fan, other Dean fans would love us to sit here and bash Rangers, but nah, your club's worse, so we're going to bash you instead. They uh, wins. They Two wins. Points. I mean, disaster performance at Duke. Hibbs actually tweeted, uh, know that meme? N- another one? Uh, the About the dive for the penalty? Aye. I don't think it was a dive. Was it a dive? I've seen them given. I'll put it that way. But yeah. Duke does go down easily, so I don't know, maybe his reputation's beginning to come back and bite him in the ass. The ref gives it, and then he's told... No. I reckon being a diver is a bit like being a sex worker. You know, you might get quick gains, you might get the money, you might get the penalties initially, but over time, people are going to realise, nah, you're just a dirty, stinking, cheating bastard. So, um, yeah, you know. Not that, has du- short- not, not that Duke's a male prostitute. No, like, no, but-, but I'm just using that as a comparison. I think it has short-term advantages, but long-term That's disadvantages, yeah. you know. Like, so. And I'll tell you one disadvantage, though, because... They didn't get given, so I mean, he's, he's dove, he's, there's no been advantage, initial advantage for it. Mick Harry, though, he's a shot deflected and it goes flying. McGarry, sorry, not McCarry. <laughs> McCarry. McGarry shot is deflected. And then we get the first goal. Adam LaFondre, I believe this is his first goal for Hibs. This guy is second in the all time Premier League list for uh, touches per goal behind Haaland. So he's had the least amount of touches? Aye. He, he, I think he averages 39 touches per goal. What's Haaland average? Like 23 or something. Some mental like that. Well, that's pretty good, isn't it? Aye, it's pretty good. It means he's clinical. Like, I know he's 36, but that's a decent enough signing for Hibs to make. No, he's, he's never really been at anyone relevant, Adam LaFondre. But... Is it Redden? Oh, right, relevant. I think with sort of record like that, you'd be like, oh, he must have played for a top, like a... Well, not a top, but like a... A Liverpool during the years where they were fucking pish. So, a uh, player. Did he not score against Arsenal? That time Red knocked Arsenal at the cup. 7 5. I think so. Arsenal won that game. Did they? But I'm pretty sure he did score, aye. Right? Um, but yeah, he, he scores. This is a great finish, man. You can't really dispute this. Um, then Doyle straight after this. You've got a header, hits off the bar, comes straight back to him, hits it back in. And then he gets injured in the celebration, gets a finger poke of doom. To the eye, Barry Robson doesn't know what to do. I think it's worth it though. I think if you say to Dodge, look, you're going to win 2 0, but you're going to get poked in the eye here. I think it, uh, maybe if he says to him here, you're going to get poked in the ass, he might be like, no, I don't want that. Although he is for Edinburgh, so who knows, maybe. He's from my place for a team in Edinburgh, right? <laughs> Come on, man. He lives there, right? So you, don't see, got... you don't see me living in Edinburgh. No offence to the great capital of Scotland, like, but there's man. a lot of uh, there's a lot of demons in Edinburgh, that's all I'll say. Fair enough. Uh, right, and then that's where the game ended. Aberdeen just didn't really create anything in that second half. Did they? Not, nothing I mean. The no, they didn't dive, really. But... Uh, probably, I think the most creative Aberdeen got was the post-match excuses for Barry Robson. I thought they were pretty. Oh, yeah. new players gelling, or the European. I mean, he, he put this... Sounds he, like fucking Beal. Yeah, he put the tie against BK hacking over, but <laughs> one loser draw, they're still going to be in Europe. He's making it seem as if they sacrificed to midweek games in order to guarantee themselves like European football it's like no you were getting European this football this would only work if they qualified for Europa League yeah I don't understand you got pumped 5-3 yeah sorry. or uh, oh, that's 5-3 I don't quite understand what Barry Robson was trying to go for here but regardless 
Uh, it mean it gets Hibs up into 10th place. Aberdeen now drop into 11th. But it's not good either way. It's, it's been a poor start for both sides. Bit better for Hibs now that they've got a win under their belt. I think getting rid of Lee Johnson was the correct decision though. I'm surprised he made it this long as as manager. I know he finished fifth last season. Does that does that say more about the standard of Scottish football though? The fact that Lee Johnson finished fifth with Hibs, a manager that just none of us rate it. Possibly. Probably. And but I tell you what, I think this year there could be a few surprises amongst the top uh, top five. I don't think it will be the top five teams, but we'll have to wait and see, guys. That is the final game. Depends of the on weekend. how quickly Aberdeen and Hearts sack their managers. It does, I guess, but... Now, I can see Hibs finishing above both of them. For the simple reason is they've pulled the trigger quickly and got rid of Lee Johnson. Well, I mean, Hibs only a point behind Hearts. Now, if they'd have kept Lee Johnson till like, game 10, 12, you know, that, that fucks you up, but... They've got rid of Lee Johnson early. There's a very good chance that they will wall appoint a manager by the time they come back for the international break. Like, I know it's so. early, but, you know, Motherwell at eight points clear of Aberdeen. Like, eight points is eight points. Definitely, yeah, eight points is... Especially when one team's playing good and one's playing shite. Eight points is nothing to be laughed at. Nope. And, uh, but yeah, we'll focus more on the points table come the review show. Which will be uploaded very soon. So anyway, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Next two games on this channel will be Cyprus and England. Scotland. I think we can uh, look forward to at least one win. Would you say so? I'm looking for two. You're looking for two. Anyway, guys, till next time. Peace.